Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be going over my favorite weapon, the sword. Most of the weapons in this game are linear for the most part. Like, as long as you know their optimal combo, then you're good to go. However, there's a lot of little things for most of these weapons that you don't necessarily have to do, but can do to kind of like make your play a lot more efficient, I guess. I will be going over some tips for the sword in this video, and since I'm just talking about one weapon, I'm just going to start from the basics because I may as well, right? So let's start things off by talking about sword combos and SP gains. The 5 hit combo for the sword grants a total of 1,152 SP and the 4 strike grants 345 SP. There's 3 combos that people do. There's C5 which is just tap 5 times, there's C3 4 strike which is tap 3 times and then 4 strike, and then lastly there's C2 4 strike which is obviously tap 2 times then 4 strike. A lot of people ask, which combo is the best and which one should I learn to do? Honestly, if you want to play sword optimally in all cases, then you should get familiar with being able to do all three because they all serve a different purpose. However, if you cannot adjust yourself to doing all three, then you should stick with doing either C2 or C3 4 strike as those two combos are the best in terms of SP gains. C5 is definitely the worst one, but it is the easiest one to do. Let me show you guys a side by side comparisons of all three combos. On the left is C2 4 strike, the middle is C5, and the right is C3 4 strike. As you can see, C5 gains SP the slowest while the other two combos are about the same, so that is why you should learn how to do one of the two 4 strike combos. Although keep in mind that there are some sword characters out there that have skill sets that aren't very 4 strike friendly 100% of the time, such as Xander and Albert. So sometimes you're just kind of forced to utilize multiple combos. Now that doesn't mean C5 is entirely useless, it has one important use and that is to super armor enemy attacks. The C4 attack where the character does an uppercut, that attack gives the character super armor. What I mean by super armor is that it will prevent the character from being flinched or from getting knocked back from certain attacks. I'm going to use High Dragon's opening blast to demonstrate. So if you're a new player, this is probably what happens in High Midgar Trials. High Midgar will do his opening blast and then you get blown all the way back to the wall. A more experienced player would know that holding 4 strike before the blast hits will prevent the character from getting blown back, but as you can see that I can only get 6 hits off before I have to hold down the 4 strike. An even more experienced player would use the C4 super armor to get through the blast. That way you're not losing any DPS, you're still constantly attacking. Now that's just one example, you can use the C5 super armor thing in any fight. You can super armor through purples, like an example that comes to mind is using it against the second phase Tartarus clones. In the Ciela fight, you can super armor through her AoE attack that she does, as well as the big purple waves. Another prime example is using super armor through high dragon dash attacks. Like in high Midgar trials, HMS's dash inflicts stun, right? That said, if you're using a spiraled sword character like Yudin, who has potent stun res as an ability, using C5 to super armor the dash is an extremely easy way to proc the ability to gain that strength buff without losing a huge chunk of your HP. So yeah, that's C5 for you guys. Now let's talk about the sword's 4 strike a bit more. Once you get a hang of C2 or C3 4 strike, you should learn how to buffer the 4 strike input, meaning inputting the 4 strike command while your character is already in mid animation. You can even buffer the 4 strike input before the match even begins. That way if you're player 1, you can close the gap and get a 4 strike hit off instead of having to roll and miss out on free SP. Learn to buffer the 4 strike while using skills. This is a great way to reposition your character immediately after using a skill while also getting a free hit off. You can even buffer the 4 strike during the C5 animation since it has some end lag to it. Basically any opportunity that you get when you can replace the dodge roll with a 4 strike, you should use the 4 strike instead. Get into the habit of dodging attacks with 4 strikes rather than with rolls so you can get that free hit off. I would say that the best feature about the sword is in its 4 strike so definitely learn to use it well. It's a very elusive weapon, very mobile if you know how to use the 4 strike. One of the last things I want to talk about is why you should learn how to use both C2 and C3 4 strike. The main reason to switch between the two combos is to adjust the timing on your attacks. This is really useful in High Midgard Trials when you're using a sword as the baiter. High Midgard has this attack where he does 3 spits in a row. If you know the timing of the spits, then you can adjust your combo between C2 and C3 4 strike so that you can correctly time your dodge using 4 strikes instead of being mistimed and having to dodge them with rolls. 
There are other minor situations where this tip is useful, but high mid guard spits is where I do this the most I would say, and find it most useful. So to end things off, I'm going to do a play by play of a demo where I use all these tips all in one clip. This clip is going to be versus expert high mid guard. I wanted to do masters, but unfortunately masters wasn't out in the day of me recording this video, but it still works. So in the beginning, I'm already buffering 4 strikes so that I can perform a 4 strike immediately as soon as the fight begins. I used the C5 combo in order to super armor my way through the blast and then I buffered the 4 strike during C5 to get behind HMS. By doing all of that, that allows me to get enough SP to perform skill 1 pretty quickly. Here I used the C5 super armor again to prevent myself from getting blown back from the back dash. I use the buffer tech again during the C5 animation in order to reposition myself to bait Trident Tempest to the top right. After dodging the tornadoes with Yudin skill 2, I know HMS will do his dash attack so I immediately do C5 after I land in order to super armor the dash. That's going to activate Yudin's potent stun res ability which gives him a 15% strength buff. So here comes the spits. I actually do two different techs here. I went from doing C2 4 strike to dodge the first set of spits to adjusting my combo to C3 4 strike to dodge the second set of spits just so it would time perfectly. And then I had to buffer the 4 strike during skill 1 in order to dodge the last set of spits. Like yeah all this stuff isn't necessary to do but if you want to improve your play and become a more efficient DPSer as a sword then I guess you should consider learning all these techniques. It's like a lot of little things that add up you know, but yeah that's all I have to say for this video. I just wanted to make this so that more people will start maining the sword because it's such a fun weapon. I'm gonna replay the whole demo clip again in regular speed for you guys. As always I want to thank you so much for watching, hope the video is helpful, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video. ブレイジングクラウン。ブレイジングクラウン。ブレイジングクラウン。ブレイジングクラウン。ブレイジングクラウン。ブレイジングクラウン。ブレイジングクラウン。ブレイジングクラウン。ブレイジングクラウン。